In this tutorial, we're going to be setting up Goo Physics on an avatar that already has Goo Materials set up on it. This is the end result that we're going to be going for. And as you can see, as I move around and move my limbs around, the body and the drip kind of moves and lags behind with it, giving it more weight and more life. Let's start with the concept of what we're going to be doing here first. In the Goo Material, we have this Physics tab. And in the Physics tab, we have four of these Physics groups available to us. These groups are going to pretty much correspond to parts of the avatar that are going to be moving individually. So for example, what we're going to be setting up here is physics group 1 is going to correspond to the right arm here, physics group 2 is going to be the left arm, physics group 3 is going to be the body and the wings, and then group 4 is going to be just the tail. So these groups are here to kind of isolate certain parts of the body so that those parts can have individual physics separate from the whole avatar. The way we specify these groups is using mass channels. If you'd like to learn more about mass channels, we have a whole tutorial available for you to watch in the description, as well as a whole manual about them as well, right here. And now once we specify these physics groups, we're going to have to attach physics group prefabs onto those parts of the avatar. Let's actually get started with the physics prefabs themselves first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Valley Factory, Goo 2, prefabs, then find these prefabs right here. As you can see, we have four individual prefabs, and then we have four individual groups right here. These prefabs are going to need to correspond to the groups. So for example, I'm going to be setting up on the body, uh, the right arm right now. So I'm going to enable physics group one. And then I'm going to drag this onto our avatar root object right here. And then I'm going to find a bone to attach this to. So I want to attach this to the right hand right here. So I'm going to select the physics group right here. I'm going to take the right hand and drag it into the position constraint right here. I'm going to enable gizmos right here. And then I'm going to press zero and activate. And as you can see, this physics group right here now is positioned on the arm itself. And if we go ahead and move hand, and where is the hand? Give me the hand, please. If we move the hand, it's going to look incredibly cursed, of course. But as you can see, the, uh, the, the thingy is moving around. So that's great. We're going to want to do that now for our physics group two as well. So let's put that in the avatar. And then I'm going to put this on the right hand. Yeah, this is the left arm. Whoops. I'm going to put this on the left hand. Again, let's find the bone. Zero and activate. Of course, you can constrain these to whatever other bone you want. You don't have to do this exactly how I'm doing it. But you are going to want to make sure that they're under the avatar root object in the hierarchy because we're going to need that for the animations later on. Now let's do three and four. So I'm just going to drag both of these in. For three, I'm just going to select the chest bone. Zero, activate. And then for four, I'm going to pick, I think... Tail six. Yeah, I'm going to pick tail six for that. Bam, zero, activate. And if you want to have the whole hierarchy here shown, you can alt click on this little arrow button right here. It'll show you the whole thing. So now we have our physics group prefab set up. We can now go ahead and set up the material physics groups. So I'll start with the body. I'm going to enable all the physics group right here, and then we're going to be masking these out using mask channels. Another important thing to note is that once we enable these physics groups, these proximity contact sliders are going to be set to animated. You're going to want to make sure that they are set to animated and they're not renamed. Otherwise, this is not going to work later on when we lock the shader. If you'd like to learn more about animating parameters, we have a tutorial on that in the description. So let's go ahead and mask out our right arm right here. So we're going to create a new capsule mask. Let's enable that and let's... We're going to name this physics group one right arm. Going to edit the capsule here. There's going to be quite a lot of stuff. I'm going to disable the gizmos. Let's set rotation to X and then position this guy so that it envelops the arm like that. I'm going to adjust the pre inversion strength as well, like that. That looks good. Move it a little bit like this because there's going to be some bleed from the body later on. Okay. That looks good. Now let's right click, copy, paste it into another physics group. Let's rename this to be group two left arm. I'm going to invert the x value of the origin. It must just make it negative. And that's going to pretty much just mirror the capsule. As you can see, it perfectly mirrors it. Sweet. And now I'm going to copy the name here and paste it into capsule mask seven. Name this physics group three body. And then let's create the body mask. Do something like this. Yep. And then pre inversion strength. 
Okay. Maybe a little bit less of the butt. Okay, that looks good. And now the last one, which is going to be the tail. Four tail. Let's enable it as well. Edit the capsule. And let's set the tail up now. Bigger, a little bit longer. E. Okay. We're going to go with that. Okay, and now we're going to apply these masks onto the body right here. So, physics group one needs to have physics group mask one. This needs to have two. This needs to have three. And this needs to have four. Okay, awesome. Now, let's set it up on the other materials. So, the fluff here is going to really only be active on the body and the tail. So, I'm going to go ahead, copy the body mask right here and paste it in and then we're also going to copy the tail mask paste it in enable four and three and then set the three to three and then four to four just like that so making sure physics you know you know just keep it keeping it tidy and stuff then the hair only is going to be affected by the body so we're gonna just copy the body mask and then three and then body and then for the wings the wings, I actually want to be affected by the physics group 3, but I want them, like the whole wing mesh to be affected. And if we don't specify a mass channel, the whole mesh is going to be controlled by the physics group. So we're actually not going to specify a mass channel for this. We're just going to keep it as is without a mass channel. And that's pretty much it for setting up the material. Now, let's go ahead and set up the animator. So let's open up this animator setup wizard. So first off, let's create the animation clips. And for this, we're going to need to find our avatar root object, and drag it into here, and then we're going to need to add all the renderers that have goo materials with physics on them into this list of renderers. So in my case, this is going to be the body, hair, and the wings. So let's add three slots here. Let's drag in the body. Let's drag in the hair. Make sure you're dragging in the actual object that has the skin mesh render or the mesh render, not the prefab root. And then the wings right here. Body. Okay, now let's click generate. And now let's select a place to put these into. I'm going to create a folder called Goo Physics Animations and select that folder. And now our clips have been generated, as you can see. Now let's go into the FX Layer Animation Wizard. Let's find our FX Layer Animator. So this is going to be on the avatar root object. Scroll down until you see playable layers right here and click on the FX. So let's go ahead and drag our FX controller into this. And then if you generate your animation clips and then immediately went to the effects layer animator wizard, these fields will already be uh, filled out for you. If they aren't, you're going to have to drag these clips in yourself. But now we can just click, click generate, 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 and generate. And that's it. You can go ahead and close this now. And now we can take this FX controller and drag this into the avatar root object right here. And then press play. And we're going to see how this looks in play mode. And if we go ahead and move our avatar. As you can see, stuff is moving around. Sweet. Now we're going to tweak some things here. So let's go into the body and let's lock this material for, so we can go ahead and move the, uh, the mesh as we tweak the material. As you can see, there's some things that, I, that are a bit odd. Like for example, the eyes kind of lag behind because the eyes aren't a goo material, right? So what I want to do is I actually want to mask out some of this movement right here. And let's go into the physics tab, and we see these on body and on drip tabs right here. The on body here controls how much the physics is going to kind of make the body lag behind, so to say. So, if we, for example, set this to 0.5. As you can see, the body kind of has this like inertia; it feels heavy, right? And this this on body strength pretty much controls that. And that's what's happening here on the eyes as you can see the the head is kind of lagging behind the eyes for a little bit so the eyes move in front of the, of the body what we're going to do here is we're going to just mask this out and i already have a texture mask set up uh, right here texture deform drip and i'm going to use my deformation mask texture right here which looks like this so as you can see the head and the uh the arms here the hands and a little bit of the feet aren't going to be affected by this on body strength right here so but the rest of the body is as you can see the body still has that lag to it. It's, it's subtle, but it's still there. But the head and hands and feet don't anymore. So it looks good. Then we can also tweak 
the um, the drip strength, how much we uh, affect the drip by the physics right here. So we're currently set to four. If we set it to zero, the drip uh, on the body at least the drip isn't going to really be affected by the physics. We can you know you know kind of tweak this value to whatever we want. I I like four. We're gonna keep it to four. Of course, you can mask this as well. And yeah, this is ready to upload. So I'll see you in VR. And so now, as you can see in VR, we have our physics. For example, if I move around, you can see the wings, and don't mind the tracking, but the wings kind of have that goo following it. And then if I move my hand around, as you can see that also. Now, there's, like, my, my hand itself isn't dripping because we masked it out, but the, um, the forearm here is. But, like, you know, because we grouped it properly, if we move this hand, this one doesn't, you know, have the physics. And, you know, our body doesn't have the physics when we move just the hands as well. Right? That's what we do the grouping for. Yeah. Got it. Have fun. Uh.